So, my name is Joseph Russo. I'm one of the core Red Rap developers and I designed the printers named after myself. You might know Prusa, Mendel, Prusa i2, Prusa i3. And I'm doing it for quite some time. And you can see me on most of the maker actions all around the globe. Where? Well, everywhere. Okay, so how did you get involved in 3D printing? Well, uh, everyone expects really like big answer, like I wanted to change the world. But actually the truth is that once upon a time, I've uh, seen a rep rap project on Hackaday and it became uh, my hobby. And after some time, I simplified the designs and made some new improvements and stuff like that. Like, I actually was one of the first guys who were doing the heat bed and all the PCB heat beds are uh, coming from my design. And that was the first thing. And when I really did the Prusa model, it was so easy and so fast to print that it kind of took off and well became what it is now uh, so this is an open hardware tattoo and the story behind it is that at the time uh, i got to the point that i actually want to start a company there was a couple of guys coming from rep rep before and most of them lost their uh how to say it, values like you know basically everything uh, mo most of the home 3D printers where are coming from the RepRap project based on the, the DNA and the knowledge. And some of the guys who left the RepRap community and started their own business, they started to use that knowledge and software and everything, but weren't giving back. And I saw them as giant hypocrites. And when I, as I said, when I go to the point, I want to start my own company, I wanted something to remind me my principles, where I came from. So that's the story behind the tattoo. So it's open hardware tattoo. And it's done like if slicer would slice it. Exact output from the slicer. And the funniest story is that I got that tattoo. Uh, if you remember the, uh, the big thing with the open hardware logo and open software foundation, or what was, was the proper name, they were kind of like fighting like, about the logo. So I got that just in that time and no one and no one knew if this is going to be the official open hardware tattoo. So everybody was like making fun of me, but fortunately it everything is okay now. Alright, so we're in your office. Yep. Okay, where are we? So we right now are in Prague, the center of Europe, the most beautiful city with cheap booze, nice girls and great food. Okay. And also, we have internet here. It's pretty good. Uh, how's business going? Well, my business. I started almost two years ago, and it's heavily Czech-based, and because I wanted to learn how to do everything, but I've got a couple, a couple more employees now, and I'm planning to expand to everywhere. So, yeah, but the business is always going to be like, uh, what I design is open source and everybody can make it. And I will be doing it too. So that's about it. All right, so you have, um, you have the i1, or I don't know. Yeah, and, it, and then you have the i3 right next to you. That will be, you can look at it, yeah. Uh, how many of those are out in the wild of your of, from your place? From my place? place? Yeah. No, from yeah. From my company? company? Yeah. Uh, a couple hundred, I think. It's close to four hundred, which is quite cool because Czech is really small and has like only ten million people. Okay. And I do only fully built printers, and people are actually required to go here and uh, go through a workshop how to use it. But if you t if you think globally. It's really huge. Uh, for example, if you look at 3D Hubs, they have TransPage, and it's the third most used printer, which is quite amazing if you think that most of the people actually had to build the printers themselves, and the, the barrier to get it is quite high because of that. So it's wonderful. There are tens of thousands. Tens of thousands by threes. I3s, I2s, okay. and well, I don't know if still someone is rocking uh, 
I won. So what is the best advancement in 3D printing in the last year or so? So right now, what I'm thinking is user-friendliness. The software is evolving, the slicers are getting more user-friendly, so you don't have to tweak the settings that much. And obviously, I think the technology is good, but the biggest leaps are in making it as easy for the users as possible. Because at the beginning, for us geeks, when we were making it and everybody was on IRC and stuff like that, it was fun to play with the printers. But if the if the RepRap and RepRap-based printers should sustain, it needs to get also user-friendly so people actually build it. Because, well, if they are choosing, there's a $400 RepRap kit which they have to build and they have poor support and you know the, the barrier to actually get it to print is quite high or you have something like 3D system I don't know how they should they call now uh, whatever and they can buy it just as a product so we need to get closer to this not completely like close it down that's down but make it make it much more friendly for people to use what is the worst thing about the 3D printing scene in the last few years? Well, shit starter. I hate all those people who don't know how to do hardware coming from some failed software startup or something like that and thinking they can do something because, well, obviously all the information is out there because of RepRap. So, yeah, they do it for the cost of the materials, but don't count the work and the amount of support they have to give. And they are completely fucking up the, uh, the ecosystem because people now think that printer is possible. They can get fully assembled printers for 200 bucks, which is impossible if you should provide support and stuff like that. And I've even heard that some, uh, some Kickstarter campaigns had uh, where, where, where counted that they knew they are losing money on each printer just because they wanted yes. to get funded in two days or something like that, which is horrible. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, I don't want to get too bitchy. So, what is the state of the RepRap project? Well, the state of RepRap is quite hard because I think what really slowing the RepRap is the wiki, which sucks because there's everything, uh, everything is all together, old stuff, outdated stuff, new stuff, experimental stuff, and everything looks like it's like right now and people get lost in it. I've tried to do something with it, but you know, the, the big boss kind of let it down, so I actually don't know what's the state. People are building, people are still building i3s. It's really hard to track the new stuff. Not many posts on the RepRap blog. Uh, something needs to be done if the RepRap project should stay white, I think. So you have the i3 next to you. And I've heard um, i4 a few times this week. So what is, what is the i4? Well, I have unfinished i3 next to me, but i4 is the master plan for my complete world domination. <laughs> and it's going to be much closer to the, uh, as I was talking before about making the printers more user-friendly. But obviously, I, have, I, I, know, I kind of know how I want the printer to look and what to do. But I'm not sure how it's going to go through, uh, what, what will stay during the development process. And I, don't, I, I actually don't have the date for the release. So that's all I can talk about by far, I guess. That's all you can talk about? Yeah, it's going to print awesome prints. We have uh, the laser uh, powder. We have the laser resin printers. There's a few of the few of the powder, a lot of the resin printers coming on the scene. Yeah. What are your thoughts on those? So about the different technologies. Well, 
I think that IBM still will be the most widespread because two things. Well, as far as uh, the powder isn't as friendly, you don't want to have that at home. You probably need a clean room and when you, you know, when you're handling the stuff, if the powder gets airborne, it's really not good for you. So, for the people who are having the printers at home or at schools, you know, like the, on the desks close to them, I don't think they are going to be used, they are going to use as well as machines. Obviously, it's wonderful. But it's not going to be like the desktop printer really quickly. And I, I would say same applies for DLP, that's for completely different things. Like if you want something small, but really high resolution. The resins are really not that safe. You know, uh, I know a couple of guys who are making those resins. So I wouldn't want to sell a printer like that into a great school and, and have small kids be like handling the objects with uncured resin on them and stuff like that. The FDM, if everything is properly enclosed, it's like completely safe. And you get functioning parts really cheaply, really quickly. So what is what is the long term 3D printing, like two, five, and ten years there? Oh, you want me to make fool of myself? I have no. Well, no, idea. everybody's gonna make fool of themselves. I have. There's no plenty of people. You're I have company. no fucking idea what's going to happen in half a year, and it's maybe it's going to get much simpler, maybe a bit cheaper, and as more people know about 3D printing, it gets mainstream. But I can't tell if in five years everyone ha everyone will have a printer. At their homes. I have no idea. A lot of new materials for FDM printers will come out, I guess. And yeah, I mean, my opinion is as good as yours. Okay. That's good. You don't, you don't want to make a guess as to when there's going to be a 3D printer at Walmart. There isn't yet? There's one at Home Depot and Lowe's, but not Walmart. 3D system didn't rate Walmart. Or no. Walmart. You want to make a guess? I don't. I have no idea. I don't know you, as Mark. Okay. So something for closing? Yeah. Go. Oh. Very wonderful. So you have a tattoo. I do. You have a tattoo. I do. So you have a tattoo. Yes, obviously. So you have a tattoo. I do. So what's on your arm? <laughs> a hand with five fingers. 